So what we decided to do was I thought I'd try one of these units out. They had been suggested to me. So I went down to King's and got this little campfire thing, oven stove thing. And uh, I'll set it up and uh, show you how it works generally. And uh, at the end of the weekend, I'll do some cooking on it. And at the end of the weekend, I'll actually give you my true opinion of what I think of it. But uh, the great thing about it is it's a smaller unit and it's got the chimney on it, which gets the smoke up and away from you. But you don't need a lot of wood to keep it running. So that's one of the reasons I've got it, because there are a lot of campsites now we are not allowed to have a campfire, full stop. So, you know, you've got to do these things. So, OK. Guys, there's my first suggestion to Kings. Um, the bag they supply is not big enough. It needs to be about another inch longer, 25 mil longer, so it gets in and out of the uh, bag much easier. As you can see, well, you may not see, you pull the pins out. Hold it down. Push the pins back in and lock them. Three legs. Pretty well idiot proof. I can see my ten year old grandson setting this up and using it. All I gotta do is teach me how to put the gun off. Okay guys, as you saw, all the chimney uh, stacks inside and uh, there's a YouTube out by another fellow I've seen that did one on this uh, unit and he complained about the fact that the butterfly valve here doesn't seal all the pipe. If it sealed all the pipe, it, it would not it'd not work at all. It would shut the air off tightly and smother the fire and uh, you'd be sitting here in smoke. So you need a bit of gap around it. The butterfly, of course, you leave open. This has only been together once. I had this together at home once. And I pulled it apart again, so... All the joints are a bit tight, which they will be for a bit. <laughs> Definitely a bit tight when you first put it together, guys. Okay, there it is together. As you see, I'm six foot, and you can people can work it out of the metric if you want to know. The butterfly goes straight up and down to light it, and uh, I'll bring the camera around and uh, show you lighting it up and see how we go. Ah, oh, sorry guys, I uh, lit the fire without having the camera on. But, uh, as you can see, there's a bit of smoke coming out of it, which there will be, until it gets going and burn burns. It's called cooks up that heat resistant paint. And uh, we'll keep it going for a while. I'll get the billy on it soon, once she gets heated up. I 
One of the things I find with my old age catching up to me now is that um, I don't mind cooking on the campfire. I like cooking on the campfire. But getting up and down is getting to be a pain. The old days the joints don't work. So uh, well, some of us, especially the older guys, want to think about it a bit. Um, this sort of unit is uh, could be the next uh, trip we go towards. goes on the front here too to stop the ashes dropping on the ground. Um, I'm in the campsite here and I really don't think we have to worry about that. So it's not on there. Okay, I'll give it about 10, 15 minutes and uh, I'll come back to you. And uh, we should have it burning quite well by then. And uh, I'll have to get the billy and stick it on I think. This is not bad actually, you sit here, you know, and you can put the pan on and cook on that quite easy without bending over. Who's in a rush? No, don't. You'll pay for it. Not yet. That's all fact, gee, you could. You don't have to cut a hole in your swag so you can fit it in there with you. Well, I need one in the boat. I've been looking at diesel heaters and shit. Winter's like cold in the boat. Diesel? What about gas? I want to carry gas on the boat. Ga gas is a bitch in a boat because it settles to the bottom if it leaks. You can, get, you can get specific marine diesel heaters. Okay. Um, they run on all that stuff. They're, they're, they're smaller than this, but very cool. The only problem oh. is I've got to have a chimney going for the cabin on the wall. No, that's so. plate, it's not cast. Oh, it's, only, it's only press sheet metal. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think that's the use of it. Yeah, the only thing I, that I've noticed so far with it, all the joints are as tight as hell. I reckon when it expands and contracts a couple yeah. of times, it'll be all right. Um, that little thing that you can open up there is a pain in the ass because there's no tool to do it. Okay. They should have had a little tool made up to do that. No, no, but I'll make a tool to fit that. Well, I'll just get a tent peg. I can make a tool. And also, the, um, I've with the pig that um, they have little shelves that hang on them. And that may not be as silly as it sounds. No, that's Greg's idea of a fire. Well, it's not eight feet wide and 12 foot high. It'll get, it'll take a bit of heat to get this stuff moving because you should have started with all that bloody um, uh, string, uh, narrowly pitment, it would have been better. Yeah, you blokes, oh yeah. Yeah, the narrow leaf pepmint's the one you use to start a fire up here. That's not. Hey, hey, this is Blackwood metal. This is fucking shit up stuff. Hey, that's Bersinia spinulacea. <laughs> well, you want to combinate sweet Bersinia. running all this time, you know.
guys. We're about to make our little cake here, and uh, what I've got, a can of peaches, already opened. What we've got is the camp oven here. It's warmed in the fire, so it's actually nice and warm in there now. So it's pretty cold out here at the moment, so warm the pot before you do it. Just pull the peaches straight in. The whole thing, can, everything else. And layer a little bit of a sizzle. Okay. You know the story how this has been prepared before to do it. Well, we've, we've cut everything open so it works. There's the greens cake mix, the vanilla cake, right? Sprinkle the cake mix in. Make sure you neatly cover the, all the top of the peaches. Of course, it never comes out of the packet when you're looking at it. There's the whole cake mix, straight in. Level it out. Over the top. Now, so I said there's the stick of butter. It's cut up in little slices. What we do now, oh, of course the paper comes off on it every time. Okay, we lay that on top. You don't have to get fancy with this. This is an idiot proof cake. And I'm an idiot and it might not work. So, because I'm doing a video and that happens, I'll cut the video out and no one will ever see it. But, uh, Okay guys, here's the last piece that's going in now. What I've done is I've, I've distributed the uh, butter all the way around and I'll give you a quick view. Before I put the lid on, then I'm going to put it on the, on the camper and start cooking it. And um, all goes well, we're going to end up with a really nice bloody dessert pie. So here you go guys, here it is inside. So there you go guys, that's it laid out. As you can see, that all the peaches are fully covered in the cake mix and the butter's on top, spread out basically all the way around. And uh, we'll whack it on the fire now and uh, we'll see how we go. And uh, if all goes well, we'll be right. I'm going to try it on top of the King's cooker, the little, little Quid King's stove thing I bought, and I'll try it on top of that. And if I can't get it going properly on that, I'll whack it across onto the, the campfire itself. But uh, there we go, lid on. And on the heat. One, one of the things that you'll find with this stuff, because you cook it on an open fire or one of these things, it's exceptionally hard to calculate the time. You don't really know. It's like cooking damper on the fire. You never quite know where it's going to take 20 minutes or 10 minutes or, you know, you just don't quite know. So it's a bit of a, a, an experiment. This is only the third time I've used this recipe, and uh, the last two times it wasn't too bad at all. We'll see how we go this time, and if we're lucky, I'll come back in about half an hour, and I'll check the cake and see how we're going. And um, if that's hot enough on there, we'll be right. If it's not, it won't. Well, actually, fact, what I might do, I'll get some coals out of the fire and put them on top of the kettle here, and get it a bit hotter. That's it, uh, yeah, that's it. So okay guys, we just put a few coals on top of the lid because it is flipping cold here and uh, that should compensate for the lack of heat coming out of that fire if all goes well. Or we'll have a great disaster and everyone can have a good laugh. Okay, that's for me coming back. I'll come back in about half an hour and uh, I'll show you how we go. Hi guys, this is Jim again with Tips and Tricks. and. Uh, over the last couple of camps, I bought one of these little King uh, little stove units and uh, I've used it uh, probably about 10 days out in the bush. Uh, I, I experimented with it with a basic timber we picked up on the campsite, you know, small branches and so forth to get it burning. Uh, the last camp I went away, I took some briquettes, you know, those little expensive things you buy. and. Uh, I also took a bag of charcoal with me. I also took a, a stack of uh, uh, pine, which was split up, not treated, just ordinary pine. And uh, each time I used this thing, I couldn't get any heat in it. it uh, like, as you can see earlier, there's a video there with plenty of heat in it, plenty of fire in it, but it doesn't produce much heat. And uh, the first time I tried to cook on top of it, I tried to cook a chicken. In, a, in the camp oven and I had to end up resorting to the campfire because I just couldn't get the heat in it. Even though we put some coals on top, we still couldn't get the heat into it. 
The second time I tried to use it to cook with a camp oven, I, I tried to cook the cake. And uh, again, that was a failure because I couldn't generate enough heat in this thing to uh, cook it. Now, I must say, I was up in the Alpine regions and it was around about three to four degrees ambient temperature around me. And uh, there wasn't any wind or anything else blowing, but uh, I did have a major problem in generating enough heat in this, in this little unit to make it work. Now, there are several faults that I picked up with this thing, uh, using it a few times. The first thing is the door. Um, it doesn't have a little knob or anything else on the door here, and the little handle gets hot when you try and open the door, and you can burn your hands on it, so you've got to use a tent peg or something else to open and shut it. Um, this thing on top here, although um, most old-fashioned stoves, as you can see, are good, but this thing's a pain in the neck to get on and off, and there's no tool that comes with it. And uh, it's a good idea, but, it, but, but uh, quite frankly, I, I'm not impressed with the way it goes on. I mean, it just once it's been used a bit, it's been a bit hot and dirt a couple of times, it's a bit of a problem. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are plumbers or engineers etc but I think we all know the old-fashioned houses they had the chimneys from their fireplaces <coughs> excuse me quite large at the base and as it went up they reduced the size that was because when the gas is first moving it's expanded and as it cools it shrinks now this pipe here is not big enough um, you cannot get a decent draft working uh, in, this, in this unit and um, as a result um, you can't get the fire to burn very well. Um, if, you had, if this pipe was bigger, I think the, the draft would be better. I think actually what I may do, if I get a chance to do it, I might um, weld a piece of pipe in here which is possibly half an inch bigger than this one, and then bring it up here, up somewhere here, put a reducer on it, then put the uh, butterfly in, put the rest of the pipe on, and um, see if that works any better. The uh, the reason I say about the small pipe is, I don't know if you can see down this pipe, but uh, I'll show you close up. Um, this pipe is all clogged up with soot because there's not enough flow, uh, airflow through it. And that's the biggest problem you get. The, the pipe gets blocked very very easily and you've got to keep cleaning the pipe out when you're out in the bush. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't take a, 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 a brush that will fit inside a pipe with me. So I had to find a pole and a, a bit of a branch and put some rags on it and push it up and down a couple of times inside to clean the uh, tube out. Now I don't know whether this is because where I was camped it was very cold and you can grab the chimney up here and uh, it wasn't hot at all, just lukewarm. So I, it's probably a good unit um, where the temperature is a bit warmer than what it is where I was. But uh, in the Alpine regions it's firstly useless. Not bad to boil on the biddly, not bad for cooking bacon and eggs. But apart from that, it's pretty well useless, I think. I don't know what the pig's like. I'd love to try a pig if someone wants to give me one. I'd like to test it against this one and compare them. But uh, I'm not impressed with this. The next thing which really annoyed me is I paid extra money for a bag. When I bought this thing, the King's bag, and uh, frankly, I don't know what it is, but I reckon it was designed by that comedy company thing that used to be on TV called Bastards Incorporated. They'll build something in packaging that no matter what you do you can't get it back in once you get it out. And I reckon I would award Kings the Bastards Incorporated award for making this bloody bag too small. It needs to be at least an inch longer or 25 millimetres for you younger people. Longer to fit, in, fit this whole thing in the bag quite easy. So my opinion, waste of money. I had a look this week over there at the fire pit they've got. I think it's a good little idea, <coughs> but quite frankly it's too small. Um, it, it wants to be a little bit larger than that. Bunnings had some, but they don't have them anymore. Greg bought one the other week and I didn't know about them, otherwise I would have got it myself. And uh, he's modified that and there'll be another thing on that. But uh, I don't know. For me, I think I think they're not much they're, they're not much chopped for much. They might be good for getting your grandkids to sit there and have a fire go and cook bacon eggs or something for you for breakfast or something like that.
but I thought it would be a good idea because it gets me up off the ground and uh, makes it easier to work. But as you can see, I'm sitting in the bench here and, and the thing is still too low. I've still got to bend to get down to it. So if the legs had it been longer, uh, I reckon about another longer would have been really good. But uh, as I say, the next time you see this in a video, I'll try to have modified it and put a bigger chimney in it and uh, put it together. Uh, another problem I have is these joints, uh, they're a bugger of a thing to get together. Absolutely bugger of a thing to get together. And uh, I wouldn't like to do it in the dark. All right, mate, that's it from me on this unit. And uh, would I buy one? No.